السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين We praise Allah سبحانه وتعالى upon all conditions We thank him for everything that he has bestowed upon us We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم his household, his companions, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless every one of us, to grant us goodness, to grant us ease. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open the doors of goodness in this world and the next. My beloved brothers and sisters, usually there is a lot of exaggeration when it comes to introductions. So I usually like to just be introduced as a brother in the deen. And I think that is the most powerful link that we have. You are my brothers and sisters, and if I don't feel it, and if you don't feel it, then we need to work a little bit more on our hearts and on our understanding. Because every one of us seated here this evening, and those brothers and sisters who are standing as well, we are here in order to feel good about our closeness to Allah, and the trial that we have been putting in to our relationship with our maker. That's why we are here. We are here because we have a relationship with Allah. And we want to improve on that relationship and we want to feel that indeed we are good and we are trying. So I want to congratulate you, my brothers and sisters, for making the effort, for making the effort to have come here and many of you have come very very early but I can give you some good news I was watching from the updates of the brothers on the chat groups telling me how the place is already quite full and I was saying oh Allah forgive me and forgive all of us Amen. it's an effort I was on a train coming in from Preston and I only arrived at 629 I think it was and we made it to this masjid in no time, thanks to my beloved driver and cousin, alhamdulillah, may Allah bless them all. And I felt quite overwhelmed to see so many people, and I felt within myself that I'm not deserving of this. But then I reminded myself that the people have come to the house of Allah. And this is because they have a connection with Allah. And you and I know each other solely because of Qalallahu wa qala Rasulu. That's it. If you ask yourself, how do you know this man? And if I were to ask myself, how do we know each other? It's only because of the power of the message of Allah. If I was saying anything else besides that, I would not be known to you. So I need to keep reminding myself that it's not you. There are so many out there who have been blessed because of their connection with the Quran and the Sunnah of Muhammad وسلم, and the fact that they are trying their best to convey that message. So it is the power of the message, not the power of the individual who can barely stand the heat of this particular gathering, subhanAllah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward us for this heat and this crowd and you know loving one another, being tolerant of one another. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the best month of Ramadan. I was asked to speak about Ramadan and this beautiful month of Ramadan. How can we make it the most rewarding? And I want to tell you, I was asked to speak about the same topic for my last five lectures. So you can imagine it's a simple topic for me. I've already rehearsed it five times, mashallah. But we try to be realistic and to give the brothers and the sisters a dose that would include myself in it. I don't want to come to preach to you as though I am some superhuman who does not require any correction, who does not have any flaws, who does not engage in any sin, and then I need to come and address people and look down upon them and make them think that you guys need to change. And as for me, I am fine. I'm okay. You know, I'm a super dude. Subhanallah. 
That doesn't work and it's wrong and it would actually depict the fact that we would, if we had that type of thinking, be in the clutches of the devil. Shaitan makes you think that you have arrived. You are pious. You are pious. When Shaitan makes you think you are pious in the month of Ramadan, perhaps he's talking of the pies that you might be having after a long fast, subhanAllah. While we are trying to obey Allah, it's good to feel good about the fact that you have tried. But you should never think to yourself that that's it, I'm holier than the other. Because you don't know which direction your life may head towards the end. And this is why we love our brothers and sisters in humanity out there who may not be Muslim as well because a day may come when perhaps they would be far better than you and I in the eyes of Allah closer on to the end of their lives and we had been thinking they were terrible, horrible and bad etc etc. What negative thoughts. How many of us seated here have been guided later on in our lives? Some of us may have been born Muslims, but we did not lead our lives as good Muslims. And later on, we became a little bit better. How many of us, myself included, we need attention here and now? I need attention indeed. May Allah help me to focus on my weaknesses. And may Allah grant the same to every one of us. May Allah grant us the coolness in this world and the next. Is it just me or did you just start feeling some air conditioning <laughs> that blew on us? Subhanallah. Imagine we started making dua to Allah for something and here comes the coolness from Allah straight. But my brothers and sisters, we need to ask ourselves, those who are seated next to us today, what do they mean to you? If you do not understand that you have a bond with them, they are your brothers. We love you for the sake of Allah. They are your sisters in the deen. We love you for the sake of Allah, not for any material gain, not for something I want for myself in this world, but rather because I want to please my maker. And I understand he made you just like he made me. And this is the reason why when we see the other creatures of the Almighty all around us, be they human or others, we need to respect them at least. We need to fulfill their rights. You know, something that really amazes me is when the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was faced with a challenge of the day of Khaybar. And he tells Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu, as he was facing an enemy, he says, Wallahi la an yahdi Allahu bika rajulan wahidan khayrul laka min humrin na'am. Wallahi, oh, my beloved cousin Ali ibn Abi Talib, if Allah were to use you to guide a single person towards the goodness, indeed it is better for you than anything material that this world can offer you. The proper wording was the red camel. But the red camel was the most expensive conveyance, which was one of the most expensive commodities that people could own at the time. He didn't say go out and harm them. Go out and attack them. No, he started off by saying, listen, our aim is to display the beauty of this faith in a way that we call people towards it such that if they were to be guided because of my deeds, because of my actions, because of me calling towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and goodness, through my honesty, through my politeness, through my character and conduct, or my direct communication with those whom I am able to do that with, then Allah will grant you a greater reward than you can imagine. This is why when the Prophet wasallam faced his enemies who disliked him, he prayed for them. Look at Umar ibn al-Khattab, he was an enemy. He disliked the Prophet, peace be upon him. He wanted to go out to harm and possibly to eradicate in his intention. The Prophet ﷺ, in the meantime, there was another man worse than that. 
His name was Amr ibn Hisham or Abu Jahl. That Abu Jahl, he was also asking for destruction in a different way of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And here comes Muhammad, peace be upon him, separate from them, knowing their plans and plots, praying for them, Allahumma a'izz al Islam bi ahad al Umarain. Oh Allah, I seek from you the acceptance of Islam or the guidance towards this deen of one of these two main enemies who are powerful men of Mecca, so that Islam can be strengthened through that. That was the dua. And in a short space of time, here comes Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu marching to the house of Al-Arqam ibn Abi Al-Arqam radiallahu anhu, where the Prophet peace be upon him was. And he says, as he's entering that door, Ya Rasul Allah. Now the minute you hear, O Messenger of Allah, it's automatic that you know this person already believes that that's a Messenger of Allah. If he wanted, he could have addressed him in a different way. But the fact that he says, Ya Rasul Allah, Inni ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, wa ashhadu annaka abduhu wa rasuluhu. O Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, I bear witness, there is none worthy of worship besides Allah, and you are the Messenger of Allah. Imagine the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, in one narration it states that they were 39 in total, and Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu was the 40th one, which was quite early. They were shocked, surprised, amazed, but they declared the greatness of Allah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, but they knew that nothing is impossible for Allah. We, you and I, lose hope in the mercy of Allah for our neighbors, for the others, and sometimes shaitan comes in to some and makes them develop such an enmity that we think to ourselves that these people have absolutely no hope in the mercy of Allah. How could we be so backward in our thinking when the messenger, peace be upon him himself, used to pray for those who had harmed the deen physically and himself and his person physically as well. Surely we need to revisit this. We need to relook at it. We need to understand when Islam spread across the globe, Wallahi, it did. Mostly through the character, the conduct, the uprightness, the beautiful business dealings, etc., etc., of traders. Traders who went forth, they were proud of their faith, they prayed on time, they were honest, they gave people their word, they were not vulgar, and they were absolutely amazing human beings. When people saw them, they wanted to be like them. I ask you, my brothers, my sisters, when people see you, do they want to be like you? If the answer is yes, you're a good Muslim. If the answer is no, you and I have a lot of work to do. When people see you, when people see me, nowadays our own family members don't want to be like us. Do you agree? But when the others who were our pious predecessors whom we always brag about we talk about the predecessors predecessors it's not a fairy tale ask yourself why do we mention them in goodness because they were good if you were to die what will happen to you would people talk good about you or bad you know that already from now subhanallah we robbed this one, we cheated that one, we harmed this one, we stole from that one, we were vulgar with our family members, we never showed our teeth even to our own children, we didn't smile at them in other words, and we refused to be people who spoke words of love to those who were blessed to us by the Almighty granted to us as children and offspring, whereas there are those who don't have children who are crying for children. And we who have them, we don't even treat them like we are their parents. We've led our lives in such a negative way that we know if I were to die, people would say, Ooh, Alhamdulillah. Oh, sorry, by the way, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiul. You see? So what slipped from the tongue initially is a word that some of us might say when some others of us pass away. Do you agree? Look at the nodding. Subhanallah, quietly, but you know, it's coming. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. It's a fact. 
So Allah blesses us with a beautiful month of Ramadan. To do what? To go back and check, are you where you were supposed to be? It's like a service station. Every 100,000 kilometers you need to change, what's it called? The belt, right? You need to change the belt. To make sure nothing goes wrong with that engine. I have a spiritual engine. Nothing should go wrong with it. Every 11 months, 12 months, this month comes back. Why? It's my service. Major overhaul. Major service. You might have minor services during the month of Ramadan, during the year, but month of Ramadan, major service. It takes you so many more days. Why? I've got to check the balancing. I've got to look at the shocks. Do I speak in a way that shocks people? Subhanallah. I need to change those shocks. Start speaking in a way that makes people smile. Smooth speech. MashaAllah. You know, when you drive in that luxury vehicle and you go over the bumps, you guys don't know as much as I do. I come from Africa. MashaAllah. So I know what it feels like when we go over the bumps and you have a, a motor vehicle that is luxury. You have two problems. One is you're enjoying the ride because the shocks are absorbing that particular bumping. But you're worried about your car because you know when the shocks go, it's like buying a whole Toyota Corolla just to repair one wheel of this Mercedes. It happens. But with us as human beings, we are bumpy ourselves. People who interact with us, it's like a speed hump. It's like a problem. It's like a pothole. They look at you and they walk away. How many of us, when people see us, they are happy. When our families, our wives, our husbands, our children, our neighbors, the others, the Muslims, the non-Muslims, when they look at us, they have the urge to smile. That's because we are not smiling. If you smile, the others will smile. Even if you're going through hardship, develop the expression on your face. For this reason, in the month of Ramadan, that smile, you're given bonus rewards for it. You know, I fly quite a bit. And there is something known as frequent flyer miles. Sometimes you have an email. They tell you, well, if you buy a ticket within this period, we're going to double up, triple up your miles. And you know, these people need a bit of business. They need money, right? But in the case of Allah, He doesn't need us. And he's telling us, I'm going to multiply your deed 70 to 700 fold and even beyond. So if you were to just smile with the correct intention. Here is the instruction of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, telling us to smile is actually a charity. And we are frowning. We get upset. Brothers and sisters, I've tried it. I still need a lot of improvement. But I've tried sometimes to become conscious of my expression and I've felt so good about it. So you're sitting in a public place, in a private place, at home. You're reading, you're going through issues, problems. Try to have a smile. It will help you to begin with. It helps you. When you have that little smile. So here comes the month of Ramadan. Major overhaul. I'm going to be more conscious of what comes out of my mouth than anything else. Because many of us make a big mistake. If someone says to you, what is Ramadan all about? What will you say? If a non-Muslim comes to you and says, what's Ramadan all about? What will you say? What will you say? Let's be honest. A lot of us, perhaps some might come up with a better answer, but a lot of us would say, oh, it's a month where we don't eat and we don't drink. That's the main two things that you would talk about during daylight hours. And they'll tell you that's quite tough. But if they were to enter our homes and houses, wallahi, in the month of Ramadan, in most homes and houses, there is much more food than any month outside Ramadan. Do you agree? There it goes. Everyone saying, yes, yes, guys, I don't know what you're saying. Yes, yes, for it's the women who mainly make that effort. <laughs> Subhanallah. You just, yes, you can already taste it before Ramadan. Subhanallah. But my brothers and sisters, it's a gift of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala for us. It's definitely a gift. It's such a narrow understanding of the month of Ramadan to tell someone, well, it's the month where we fast. We fast. And we want it to pass very fast as well. So it's a fast fast. And unfortunately in Europe it's a slow fast. 
at this time. But don't worry, you have your bonus 37 years or 35 years from now. Maybe 17 and a half years from now. It's going to be shorter than anything by the will of Allah. Turns around. Yesterday I spoke in Manchester and I said, my brothers and sisters, you guys don't know that we are so lucky in Africa. We have a short fast. You guys have these long fasts, right? So for us, it's a bonus because we get the same reward as you, but we fasted so much, you fasted so much. First world countries, that's what you happen to do. Pay, mashallah. However, I want to equate that statement and I did yesterday. I'm doing it again today. You have a bonus. You can stand in ibadah and acts of worship throughout the night and it will only be three hours or four hours. And if we were to stand throughout the night, we would get the same reward, but it would be 10 to 12 hours. Subhanallah. You see how Allah balanced it out. The problem is how many of us are ready to spend the night in ibadah. Imagine if people were saying, oh, you know, the East London mosque, if you go there, there are brothers who don't leave the mosque all night. They are seated. <laughs> that's one hour. Come on. That's two hours. What else? Subhanallah. But isn't it a correct statement that there are brothers who will sit all night in the masjid, right? It makes you sound like some big pious guy, right? Wow, I sat all night. Let me tell you, when you make the effort, leave its acceptance to Allah. Don't think to, your, to yourself for a moment, right? I did this. Now that's it. I'm better than all these guys who were sleeping. Because there was once a companion, the Prophet, peace be upon him, pointed towards him and told the other companions, if you want to see a person from heaven, you see this man. So he was followed by one of the companions. And later on, when he explained what his extra deeds were, he actually said, there's not much. There's not much of extra things that I do. After Salat al-Isha, he went off to sleep and he got up for Salat al-Fajr. I would expect and you would expect, just like the rest of the companions expected that perhaps this man is so holy, so pious that he must be getting up when everyone is asleep and quietly worshipping Allah, which is a very, very powerful deed indeed. So when he searched a little bit more into his deeds, there was that special deed that was found, which is better than engaging in ibadah through the entire night. What is it? Remove the hatred in your heart from others or of others. Wallahi, do you know why? It is more difficult than anything. Today we hate our own brothers, one mother, one father, our uncles, our aunts. We cannot find it in our hearts to forgive a spouse who has erred. Your husband made a mistake. Today we are taught by the environment that that mistake needs to be dealt with in a way that we just get a divorce. Whereas Allah put you there to help your spouse. Yes, if it is something major, you might want to deal with it in a bigger way. Someone has abused you physically in a bad way. You have every right to seek protection and you should. And you can opt to terminate that marriage. But I'm talking of the petties of today. I've heard of a case a few years back where there was a wedding. Some of you might have heard me say this before. And at the function, the husband tells, you know, he's a groom, basically new. He tells his newly wedded wife, he says, can you pass me the salad? You know, the salad. It was a round table. She said, you can get it yourself. That must be training, you know, day one. Some of her friends might have told her, you know what, just make sure that you don't give the guy the impression that you're going to do everything he says at his beck and call. But anyway, listen to what happened, a true story. He says, what do you mean? Pass it. She says, I don't want. Well, then you're divorced. <laughs> Can you believe it? Can you believe it? I think a lot of you would not even believe that. But it's happening because we no longer value our relationships. We don't. My brothers and sisters, Ramadan is there to build relations, to think about where you are. And the building of a relationship requires both parties, not just one. Imagine your neighbor has a right. That right starts off when he is not a Muslim. They have a right. They're not a Muslim. Why do they have a right? 
Because it is an honor for you that you have a neighbor who's not a Muslim so that you can showcase the beauty of this faith. Minimum is the hatred of that person towards Islam will be minimized. That's the minimum. Because people have a perception. They don't know. They probably just watch telly. They might hear from the media. They see things going on in the name of religion that don't belong to the religion. And what happens? They develop this perception. You and I are given the opportunity to work on it. But what do we do? We don't greet. We don't talk. We don't interact. We don't send some food or a gift or a card or something of that nature to those who are our neighbors. Because we say, well, they're not Muslim. Do you know your religion? When they're not Muslim, you should be taking care of that right. When they're a Muslim, it becomes a double right. When they're related to you, it becomes a triple right. When they're a Muslim and related to you, it's a quadruple right. But it still means that that non-Muslim neighbor of yours has a right. A right to what? To your kind neighborhood. Neighborliness. You've got to be a neighbor. And you've got to be a kind, good neighbor. Such that if they were to leave on a holiday or you were to go, it would be good for them to trust you to say, you know what, we're not going to be here for a week. Can you just keep an eye? If your neighbors can tell you that as non-Muslims, inshallah, you're heading somewhere. You're getting somewhere. And if you could tell them that, you know what, we're not going to be here for a week. Can you keep an eye? They say, don't worry, we'll keep an eye. Subhanallah. How good a relationship is that? Guidance is in the hands of the Almighty. My job and yours is not to convert anyone. The conversion is in the hands of Allah. The reversion is in the hands of Allah. Innaka la tahdi man ahbabta Walakin Allah yahdi man yasha you will not guide whomsoever you wish but it's Allah who guides whomsoever he wishes but our duty is only to convey. I've conveyed. I've been the best I can. In Ramadan, many of us say that we don't eat or drink, not realizing that there is far more to the fast than that. Whoever does not abandon that bad, false, deceptive, hurtful, abusive speech and acting upon it, acting in an abusive way, a bad way, a deceptive way, in a rotten way basically, then Allah says, you're wasting your time staying away from food and drink. We don't need the fact that you abstained from food and drink. The reward for you is nothing besides hunger and thirst. Just like if you were to stand at night for long hours or you were to read salah, your prayer, by the way, Salah, when we talk of Salah, I'd like to correct something. Some people now think there are six Salahs. Fajr, Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, Isha and Muhammad. You didn't get that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness, inshallah. I see you're not into football. So... <laughs> That took long, guys. That took very, very long. I could have scored three goals. Subhanallah. <laughs> Six salah. Fajr, Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, Isha, and Muhammad. You know what the young boys think that means? That means there is time in the day to watch football. Subhanallah. My brothers, that is salah. Salah. So for your information, when you want to say the name Muhammad, you've got to add a ha to it. Did you hear why? Do you know why? Because he's hot when it comes to football, mashallah. <laughs> My brothers and sisters, that is salah. Salah is goodness and piety. That's what it means. It doesn't mean prayer. Prayer is salah with a ha. And this is salah with a ha. But I want to tell you there are people who fulfill their salah. They fulfill their prayer. They full stand in the night. They read the Quran. They do a lot. But... Their tongues are bad. Their expressions are dirty. They are abusive in their own homes to their own spouses. They don't take care of their children. They don't spend time with their children. Why did you have those kids? Why did you get married if you didn't want to spend time with your wife, your husband, your children? Why did you waste time getting married? Messing someone's life up. You have to make the time. It's an act of worship. 
But if you are or anyone is dirty in their actions and their words, abusive, hurtful, deceptive, they've stolen, they cheat, they harm, they attack. In that case, even the hadith says that this person is rewarded with nothing besides having wasted their time and effort and energy and having suffered lack of sleep for nothing. لَيْسَ لَهُ مِنْ قِيَامِهِ إِلَّا التَّعَبُ وَالسَّهَرِ How many of the people they are, they achieve nothing from standing in prayer all night except getting tired and loss of sleep. Because there's something else wrong in your machine. I have a Mercedes. Your body and mine is far greater than a Mercedes. It's more sophisticated. But I promise you, we have the liver, we have the kidneys, we have the heart, we have the eyes, we have the nose, we have the ears. If any one of those organs is to fail, we have failed. Just like your car. You could have a problem with anything. If it's the tire, that's to do with air, or the radiator to do with the water, or the tank of petrol fuel or anything else i'm not a mechanic so i cannot rattle out all the different aspects of that vehicle but you would know there's something wrong with my car i can tell you with a motor vehicle it is such that if there is 0.1 gram of a lead weight that is missing from your alloy you will not enjoy the drive you agree it's called wheel balancing. If it's out by 0.1 grams, it's on the wrong spot. You have a problem. You'll take it to the other man. You'll take it back and you'll say, listen, I need this done again. It, there is still a little bit of a shudder or whatever you want to call it. We are more sophisticated. When 0.1 grams of some deed is in the wrong place, wrong time, you also start shuddering, subhanAllah. You don't realize. You're wasting your time. So. Ramadan is here to look at every aspect. Be careful if someone were to ask me what is Ramadan all about, I will tell them it is to achieve holistic God consciousness. Because the Quran says, Kutiba alaykum usiyamu kama kutiba ala ladina min qablikum la'allakum tattakun. O you who believe, Fasting has been prescribed upon you just like it was upon those before you in order that you achieve taqwa. Taqwa means the consciousness of Allah. I've become more conscious of my maker. Who am I? Where did I come from? Where am I right now? Where am I heading? And what is my relationship with all of those around me? Subhanallah. The minute you look at where you came from, where you are and where you're heading, it will improve your relationship with Allah. The minute you look at the rest of the creatures of the same Allah, it will improve your relationship with mankind. Those are the two things that will take you to heaven. When the Prophet ﷺ was asked about people who will enter Jannah, we want to know their qualities. Those who are going to go to paradise. Tell us what are their qualities. Do you know what he said? He said, Taqwallahi wa husnul khuluqi. There are two things that take people to heaven. Consciousness of Allah. And the greatness of your character and conduct. My brothers and sisters, ask yourself, how conscious are you of Allah? How conscious am I? We can do more, inshallah. I can improve on that. I'm sure I can. And I can tell you something amazing. I can improve on my character and conduct. I'd like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant me paradise by looking at something good I've done. So I'm going to keep on trying to do good until I die. And when the Prophet, peace be upon him, was asked about hellfire, that what are the deeds that take people in that direction? He warned us about the tongue and the private parts. Straight. He was direct, not like us. You know, we come, we beat about. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. Improve your tongue. Improve your tongue. Increase the remembrance of Allah. Ramadan is a month of remembrance. Think of the most powerful words you could say. Occupy your tongue with them. Subhanallah. All praise is due to Allah. Glory be to Allah. Allah is the greatest. I thank you, O oh Allah. And so on. Read the Quran. Ramadan is a month of the Quran. Many of us don't read the Quran enough. I wouldn't even want to ask you how many of you have opened the Quran today. Because I am one of those who didn't. May Allah forgive me. That doesn't mean I didn't read it. I read a little bit, but I can do much better than I have. 
I didn't open the Mus'haf today. I feel embarrassed, but the reason I'm admitting it in front of the whole world is to show you that we all need help. We all need to improve. When I talk to you, it's not like I'm telling you guys, you need to do this. We need to do this. I am included in it. May Allah forgive me and help me and every one of us. So my brothers and sisters, it's the month of the Quran. How much Quran are you reading from now? Subhanallah. It is a month where we should be careful of what comes out of our mouth. Yet many of us are only careful about what goes into our mouths. I shouldn't eat. I shouldn't drink. We'll ask. We'll phone the scholar and say, you know, I used the nasal spray and I felt a small drop going in. Is my fast valid? But we won't say I've been swearing my wife all afternoon. Is my fast valid? Yeah. We won't say I was so angry with the guy on the road. I started swearing him F's and B's. I almost beat him up. Is my fast valid? We won't say that, but we'll ask about, you know, I was asthmatic and I felt like coughing and you know, I put a little spray in my mouth and, and I started breathing okay and someone told me your fast is not valid. Is it okay? Is it not okay? My brother, there are bigger things that you are not even worried about. Look at what I'm saying. We're talking about the one gram, 0.1 gram of lead on an alloy. Subhanallah, that affects your whole vehicle. I promise you, your entire paradise can be achieved or lost based on one small deed. So do not belittle the value of goodness, even if it is a little smile. And do not belittle the damage of a sin, even if it is a drop of backbiting. You see what is backbiting? Subhanallah, we talk about people behind their backs. My brothers and sisters, I challenge you and myself, don't talk about others. Don't talk about them unless you're saying something good. Or unless you are involved in it and you need your right. لا يحب الله الجهر بالسوء من القول إلا من ظلم Allah does not like you to speak openly about some bad of someone unless you have been oppressed. When you're oppressed, I will go to the police perhaps and complain, you know, that man did this and he did that. I mean, I can't go to the policeman and say, guys, you know, something happened, but I'm a Muslim, I'm not allowed to backbite. They look at you and say, what? I can't backbite, but something happened. <laughs> so that proves that you are allowed to speak sometimes when you have to about someone. You're involved, you're oppressed, you need your right. You have to open your mouth and you're going to have to say, this man did that, that one did this and I really need your help and so on. But when it doesn't concern you, it's not that major. It is something that subhanallah, you just want to belittle someone. Juicy gossip will also break your fast. Do you know that? But it breaks it in a different way. It nullifies the reward of your fast. It nullifies the reward of your fast. Juicy gossip, but we love it. We marinate it as well. Do you know how? Subhanallah, we add flavor to it. We just heard, you know, oh, do you see that guy's walking with that woman on the road? That's what we heard. The next thing, you see that guy's going out with that chick there, you see. <laughs> After that, <gasps> you know, she's got a bump. I think she's pregnant. <laughs> that is the gossip. We added marination and wallahi, we're saying dirty things. This is valid inside or outside of Ramadan. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us. My brothers and sisters, this is a month of becoming a better person. You want to become a better person, you need to increase your value in the eyes of Allah. What is taqwa? I'm conscious of Allah. Conscious of Allah meaning anything that's going to displease Allah. I must become conscious of it. I want to impress upon you the importance of being kind to those you live with. We're living in an age of technology, mashallah. The world has become a global village. People get to know each other. People get to reach out to others. And can I tell you one of the biggest problems we have? Those whom we live with, we're not getting along with them. With our children, a lot of the times you have, this is another red button. A lot of the times you have children saying, you know, I want to marry someone and my father is saying no, my mother is saying no, or sometimes they are already somehow married and then they're saying, but I don't know what to do. I'm stuck because my family or the family, whatever. I tell you, my brothers and sisters, we're all to blame. Do you know why? We don't have time for one another these days. So 
Father, no time. Mother, no time. Children, no time. Everyone is spending time on the wrong things with the wrong circle. So when a problem happens, we are only introduced to it way within that problem in a way that we cannot solve it. It's too late. It's too far down the line. They already have fixed up everything. They've been going out for the last four years. Father living in the dark. Sometimes he's also going out with someone. A'udhu Billah. It's a reality. Mother, another story, not interested. And here comes the child saying, don't worry, I, let's, we'll try with my dad. But you know what? They've been having a relationship like husband and wife for the last four years. And the father says, no, you're not marrying. Brother, it's, this is just a formality. We're coming to you to say we're doing haram. You are the only guy who can halalize it. So we need that. That's all you're saying. We need to come up straight. But the father, pride. Why pride? What are people going to say? What are people? What is Allah going to say? What is Allah already saying? There is darkness upon you and your home. You need to open the door and smell the coffee. Even if it's Ramadan. <laughs> My brothers and sisters, we need to open the doors and understand the reality of what's going on. Help your children. Be kind to them, understand them. They may make mistakes, but we need to realize that we've also made mistakes and they will come back. They are still our kids, but we cannot allow our egos and our pride and our concern for what Tom, Dick and Harry are going to say about our children when we are the parents. We have to do the right thing. You're a Muslim. You follow the deen. The deen tells you no to racism, no to tribalism, no to nepotism and whatever other isms there are that are terrible. No to them. That's what your deen tells you. That's what the prophet peace be upon him tells you. And I've come across pious people with beards that stretch a meter beyond them. And they tell you, no, I don't care what the prophet says. I'm saying this. What did you just say? What did you just say? Salah first off. Fasting, you might fast as long as forever. Quran, one khatam a day. But you just said a statement that would nullify all of that. Let's face reality, my brothers and sisters. Make life easy for those you live with and your Ramadan will be the best. We have complaints every day about people who live with each other. I am one of those who believes that when your children get married, they should stay separately from day one because the further they are, the further they are physically, the closer they will be into your heart. The more you try to keep everyone together, the more distant they become because we clash. Yes, there are exceptions to that. There are some homes that are fortunate, alhamdulillah, but the general trend we have issues when everyone lives together. You have to have a big heart. You have to be very, very accommodating. And you have to understand your view is only but an opinion. That's all. It's not to be dictated upon. Do you want to live nicely? Do you want to be happy? I promise you, you make others who live with you happy and you shall be very happy. The problem with us, everyone is selfish. My view, that's it. We are selfish. The father selfish, mother selfish, brother, wife, the other one, the children, the other wife, the other brother. What are you doing all living all like this when you don't have the patience? Develop the patience. Sometimes circumstances make us live together. If that is the case, learn to respect people. Give them their freedom. Don't burden them with something extra over and above what is generally expected of them. You know what I'm saying? Will probably be affecting a lot of us here. Because we're about to enter Ramadan. I want it to be a beautiful Ramadan. You have your daughter-in-law. Every day you bring along 10 people. Come on, she's a human being. Make it once, twice, that's it. Every Eid, the same daughter-in-law, every Eid. It's expected of her to cook for 50 people. Whenever is she going to have the day to have an Eid? And we blackmail her spiritually by telling her, this is your Jannah. Your Jannah, you could have said, okay, my Jannah is I'm going to buy some food from outside and put my pride wherever it belongs. And I'm going to ensure that you too can have a beautiful Eid. Why are the restaurants there? For what? Why do they open on the day of Eid? 
take out that money that you want to brag and boast and show about and buy some food and let the women at home have a day off. May Allah make it easy. I see the guys are smiling. I suppose those smiling are those who own the restaurants, right? <laughs> free advert, free advertising. But it's a fact. Why? We are no longer living in a stage where you can impose on family members and whether it's your wife, your daughter-in-law, your mother, whoever else it may be, different people. Wallahi, we make them suffer and we make them believe that Ramadan is a month where you are supposed to be in the kitchen for at least seven hours and then only will your taraweeh be accepted. And for them, it's just Kul Wallahu Ahad in every rakah. Allah forgive us. Wallahi, it's a sin. It's a crime. They also need to read Quran. They also need to get close to Allah. Come on, be considerate. And we go to our friends' houses every day and we sit and we, you know, there are people who are, who might be, might be cursing you. When is this guy going to leave? Subhanallah. I remember when I was a kid, some of you might've heard this, me say it again. It's come to my mind just now. When I was a kid, we went to someone's house with my mother. And as we're entering, we saw this sign. The sign says, we are very happy at your arrival, but we will be even happier when you depart. Oh, wow. <laughs> Straight to the point. Straight to the point. It means you need to know how long you're going to stay here. We never went back to that house. My mother didn't want. And I'm trying to explain to her, you know what? It's just a joke. Come on. It's just a sticker to laugh. But in reality, it's true for everyone. We're happy you came. But if you overstay, we're going to be happier when you go. And the next time you come, we're going to send the child out to say, my daddy said that I must come out and tell you that he's not at home. <laughs> yeah, subhanallah. Brothers and sisters, you need to know things. You need to understand things. I've said a few words. I'm going to continue on this topic elsewhere, inshallah. So perhaps if you follow, you might get a little bit more of this dose. Please forgive me. I was passionate based on a lot of what's happened today. I really love you all for the sake of Allah. And I really believe that we have a connection and not just with us. We have a duty unto all those whom we live with, Muslim and non-Muslim. We have a duty unto them. And we are, we are supposed to be from among those who really care for each other. I want this month of Ramadan to be a month with a difference for myself and for everyone. And I told you how to start it. We've been fasting all along. We've been reading Quran, etc., etc. This time, learn to develop your character during the month of Ramadan. Your conduct, be the best husband, the best man. The best woman, the best wife, the best mother, the best mother-in-law, the best father, the best daughter-in-law. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all. It's exactly my time. And because we're beaming across the globe live on many television stations, I need to end at 8 p.m. May Allah forgive us all. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.